Hello, and welcome to The Art of Being Human. Today I thought I would do a special segment on body types and personality types. Now by body types, we're talking about people who are tall or short or heavy set or thin or muscular. In other words, different ways that your body is, and different ways that your body has developed. Is there a connection between your body type and your personality? Well, according to some people, yes. And I want to mention from the start, I don't take much stock in this, but the reason I want to give it a hearing is the fact that a lot of people work with this. Now, I don't know of any legitimate counselor or psychiatrist or anyone that's in the medical health profession and, and, and anyone who's in the mental health profession that pays a lot of attention to this or ever uses it for diagnosis or treatment. However, a lot of people are interested in it. They look at it. It's fun to deal with. They can take paper and pencil tests and decide where they are and what they're like and they can fit themselves in certain categories. And for them, it's just like a good time. And so so I want to look at it. I was supposed to go to a conference once, and it turned out I didn't go. But I was supposed to go to a conference, and it was uh, from some kind of a ministerial group. And they usually, at a conference, subdivide people into different groups to study different kinds of things. And I probably would have gone on the one on, on personality and how it develops. And they did a whole, a whole part, I'm going to call it a show, a whole seminar on how to decide what you will like and learn more about yourself on the basis of your body types. And I know I didn't go, something interfered with my going, but the people that went came back with glowing reports about how they knew more about themselves than they ever did before. And because they were tall, they had these characteristics. And because they were short, they had those characteristics. And they plugged themselves into all of these little characteristics. And so therefore, they knew whether they were ectomorph or mesomorph or endomorph, whatever it is. I don't take much stock in it because it's too simplistic. You can't say to a person, because you're tall, you're bound to have these characteristics, or because you're short, you're bound to have these characteristics. And I don't know of any legitimate therapist that pays any attention to it at all. But it is fascinating for the average person, and it, it does seem like people do kind of fit in. So therefore, I'm going to take a look at it. So these are body types. So let's take a look at the, at the chart. Body type refers to whether you're tall, whether you're thin, whether you're heavy, whether you're light, where, where, if you're muscular at all. And the question is, can the basic personality be based on body type so that all people who have certain characteristics, all tall people will have certain characteristics, all short people will have certain characteristics, all heavy people will have certain characteristics, and all thin people will have certain characteristics. Or if you're muscular, you'll have certain characteristics. Can you actually understand your personality on the basis of what your body types are. So the question is, another question is, do all people with the same body types have the same personality types? And according to this theory, if it's right, they should. So therefore, if I'm tall and thin, then and I have certain characteristics that anybody else who's tall and thin also has those same characteristics. Well, it's, it's very simplistic. But anyway, there's a man whose name was W. H. Sheldon. And he divided people into three types. He called them ectomorph, mesomorph, or endomorph. And the ectomorph, whoops, I gotta change this. I'm losing myself here. Maybe that's because of my personality type. Yeah, let me get, it, get this in here. <clears throat> ectomorph is light and thin. Mesomorph is husky and muscular. And endomorph are round, a kind of a round body type, a little more heavy set. Those are the three types. <clears throat> so I want to split this up and tell you what, if you are those in those types, what your, what your characteristics would be according to Sheldon. Okay, so here we go. 
An ectomorph is going to be light, thin, and tall. We may as well say tall and thin. What is that personality like? Fragile, inhibited, introverted, nervous, and wants solitude. Okay, a fragile person, they can't take much emotionally. They're introverted, they're into themselves, they're nervous, and they want to be kept alone. They want to be alone, they want to be left alone. That's the ectomorph. Do you fit in with that? Well, if you're a mesomorph, you are muscular, you are husky, and your personality is that you are assertive, courageous, and you love power. How many people fit into that? Do you know what? Uh, one of the things about politics, one of the things about people who run for office, they love power. They're addicted to having power, or they want to have power. Now, I'm sure that some of these people are thin and not muscular, you know? So it, it's just an idea that, that Sheldon had. Now the endomorph, you'll have a round body and you're heavy set, probably a little overweight. These people become fat and they uh, love comfort food, they're couch potatoes, uh, they um, are relaxed, and they're very sociable, so they're easy to get along with. Now, couldn't you have, if you're an individual, a combination of any of these types? I think most people do, and one of the problems is that we, as people, we, we're not all one type. We get mixed types. And uh, we, we, get involved, uh, we get involved in different kinds of things that show that we can't be classified. Now, how do people fit the profile? How some people fit the profile? Uh, it's fun to take the paper and pencil test and to peg yourself into one of these types, but there are problems with these kinds of theories. And I want to tell you, there's many of theories like this. This is just one, and this is one of the most popular, and this is one of the most historic, because many people have studied this particular Sheldon types. It's too simplistic. People are complicated. People can do the same things for different reasons, and people can do different things things for the same reasons. So people's body shape and weight, uh, and they can change with age. Your characteristics can change with age. You may be tall and thin when you're in your 20s, so now you're tall and heavy when you're in your 60s, you know? Body type changes with age, and that's one of the problems with these theories. It can't be used for diagnosis. It can't be used for treatment. So I'm going to just make some statements here about it. What if a tall, thin person becomes heavy with age or because of a medical condition? What if? What if a thin person with diabetes gains weight due to insulin shots? And I'm going to be starting in two segments, uh, in the next segment, actually, the beginning of a series on diabetes. Uh, people who are thin are uh, many times diabetic, but as soon as they take insulin, they gain a lot of weight. Insulin puts weight on you, and there's reasons for that. What if an aggressive short person becomes ill? They lose their weight due to a serious illness. I mentioned here cancer, but others. Does their personality change with it? Uh, illnesses, accidents, nutrition, weight loss or gain, they all have an influence on personality, and personalities do change. Now, I firmly believe that there's a core of every person that does not change. You're kind of born with it. It's kind of innate within you, and it doesn't change, and you go through your life with that, and that's fine. That's a part of who we are. As a matter of fact, when you feel older, and I had somebody, a friend of mine, ask me about it. When you feel older, when you are older, do you feel any different as a person than you did when you were younger? Don't you feel there's been a continuity in your personality that's taken over and stayed with you throughout the years? I don't feel any different as a person as I did when I was 16. I'm just older, that's all. 
you know. So we don't really change. There's a core of our personality that doesn't change, and it's part of what we call the never-ending self. It just stays. Now, there are a lot of things that may change us. We may be more compassionate as we grow older uh, because of the fact that we've suffered enough that we understand other people's suffering, but it still doesn't change our innate core. That core remains all the way through our life. But does it change as we have personality problems or as we get ill or if we have difficult circumstances? How much does it change? Well, sometimes it doesn't change the basic core, but it may change the way that we look at things. So we are kind of different than we used to be, but the basic core still remains the same. Okay, illnesses, accidents, nutrition, weight loss, and weight gain can have an influence on personalities. And personalities do change, but not the basic core. But there are personality changes. So a, a soldier who goes to war and develops PTSD, the personality changes and he's not the same. We hear of soldiers coming back from Vietnam and soldiers coming back from Iran and Iraq and the Middle East and they're not the same. They go back home, they see their loved ones, they're happy to be home, they're happy to have them, and then the problems start because they have seen so much. It has changed the way that they function. It has changed the way that the brain works. And you've got to remember that if a person has a brain injury, that's going to change them. A brain injury or anything that affects the way that you look at the world, that's going to change you. And your personality actually starts with your brain. It doesn't start with your heart, as some people think. Okay, so there are changes. People who are bullied, these, person, uh, these uh, experiences can change a person, and they're not the same. I still say the, the inner core is the same, but the way they look at life is different. They may go from being happy to morose. They may go from being a, a marginally healthy person to being a very ill person emotionally because they get bullied and they can't take it. Who are the people who shoot at other people? People. Who are the people who go into schools and on, into the post offices and they shoot people and they, there's gunfire? A lot of them are people who have changed because they're ill, they have PTSD, they've been to war, and they don't look at things the same way. I mentioned before, my sister and I were on the phone. I was teaching out of state, and my sister was on the phone, and all of a sudden she became terrified, and she says, Someone's trying to get in. I says, I'm signing off. You call the police. She did. And the police came and took the man away. He thought he was in Vietnam. He thought he was fighting the Vietnamese war all over again, and that he was actually trying to, to engage the enemy. And it was my sister's house, and she was home alone. So you see, there can be such changes in terms of our perception and such changes in terms of our function because of serious things that we have been through. The man needed help, and he was taken off and put into a hospital where he could get the help that he needed, and then she was safe after that. So she called me back and explained what happened. You know, people go through horrendous things, and then when they go through those horrendous things, they don't look at life the same kind of way. They develop fears, they have phobias, and so it's just hard for them to function like a normal person. Yet I still maintain that there is a core of them that stays the same, but their expression and what they do and how they behave behave, it's different according to the things that have happened to them. We have to keep that in mind. They're not going to fit into a specific category when so many things have happened to them that they're no longer looking at things the same way. People who experience abuse, the personality changes. That's how they get PTSD. People who think that they must lose weight and they become anorexic, the personality changes. If you've ever dealt with anorexics, you know they will not eat. You can't convince them to eat. You can bargain with them. That's no guarantee they're going to eat. And eventually, they can actually die from anorexia.
I won't see an anorexic person unless I have a medical backup because they run into lots and lots of medical problems. Okay, people who come down with mental illnesses in their teen or young adult years, the major mental illnesses, schizophrenia, um, uh, these types of biochemical disturbances, they come down during the uh, adult years and that changes the personality too. People with neurological disorders, such as myasthenia gravis, Parkinson's, multiple cirrhosis, the personality changes. People who are deprived of basic needs due to poverty, their personality changes. Children who can't learn, they can't learn because they don't have the correct nutrition and it affects their brain development. Children who are ab abandoned, their personalities change. The brain, however, has plasticity. It's called plasticity. It can change uh, its nature. It can rewire. It can do all kinds of marvelous things. So this is important to remember, and that will, that will help people to adjust to situations. When a person has adjusted to a chronic illness, uh, when they have to adjust to a chronic illness, one that will not go away or one that will not be healed, then the personality must adjust to this, and it is a huge adjustment process. Parents or family members that are taking care of very ill children or very ill parents or other family members that are ill, they have to adjust to the varying conditions that life presents to them because that life is not the same. Your parents who are healthy no longer are. Your dad's had a bad stroke and he can no longer talk. He can no longer walk by himself. All kinds of things that can change lives. So we're living in a world uh, also, and I mentioned this once before, we're living in a world that has electromagnetism, that has ions, positive and negative ions. There's a whole world around us, and it has not to do with us, but it has to do with nature and what's in nature. And positive and negative ions that are out of balance can cause people to feel despair, depression, and physical illness. I know I went into this a little bit before, but I didn't go into it a whole lot. But that changes people. Then when you get people who are in an environment where the positive and the negative ions are in balance, whatever symptoms they had before, they lose those symptoms and they feel good again. So uh, our physical, emotional, and intellectual cycles affect how we feel, either healthy or unhealthy, and I did go into that a little bit too. The environment around us influences us, and we can change. Our experiences change us. So what does it mean? We cannot just put ourselves in some kind of a a bind and say, or some kind of a box and say, this is who I am because I'm tall or I'm short. Now, there is something else I want to get into. We have time for this. Personality types. I have a lot more faith in this because there's been an intense amount of research done on it. We can divide people into different personality types, but it's not based upon their physical type. It's not based upon whether they're tall or whether they're short. And their personalities are, are a lot of it innate, and we can test that out and track that. And you've heard of these personality types. This type A. And the characteristics of a type A personality, they're competitive, uh, they have a time urgency, everything's got to be on time, they are anger, uh, they get angry, they can be aggressive, they have excessive ambition, and they don't really enjoy leisure time because they're always working, and they are prone to heart disease. Type B, they perform under pressure, there's no competitive drive, there's no time urgency, they enjoy their leisure time, and they don't have guilt about things, they're not so impulsive, they're not prone to heart disease. Type C, they suppress their anger, appear to be calm and passive, and they put other, need, other people's needs ahead of themselves. They hold resentments against others for perceived wrongs. They don't necessarily talk about it, but they are prone to cancer. Uh, type D, 
Uh, these are people have negative emotions, they're inhibited socially, they're prone to cardiovascular problems. Cynical people are much more prone to have heart problems. Personality types, are, these are personality types are lifelong. So I think that's, that's basically where I want to stop because I want to see you to see that there's a difference between having a physical type being tall or short and having having a personality type which is different, divided into A, B, C, and D. So uh, don't take too much stock on anything uh, that has to do with your personalities a certain way because you like this or you're tall or you're short. There are dozens of those theories out there. I have got one on my Facebook page where they showed pictures of four famous people. Mother Teresa was one. I can't remember what the other three were. And they were saying, if you like Mother Teresa and you identify with her, then you've got these characteristics. If you identify with other people, I don't remember the other three, then they, you have those characteristics. So the, the personality type things, so they're all over the place. You just have to use your judgment and not take them too seriously. But type A, B, C, and D are legitimate. Other things based on body type are not legitimate. And you see people do change. The core remains the same, but they do change as life goes on, depending upon their health and depending upon their circumstances, depending upon where they're living. And you have to take all of that into consideration. You cannot use any of these things for treatment or for diagnosis or for anything that's really all that very serious. So I'm going to close it here because we are pretty much out of time. And the next time I'm going to start a series of segments on diabetes. Please join me next time.